Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 28th episode of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, a podcast all about the subject of antinatalism created by antinatalists. My name is Amanda Oldfans-Sukunik, also known as Feverwolf Films on YouTube, and today I'm speaking with Japanese professor of philosophy and ethics at Wasada University and author of the recent work, Umarete konai hou ga yokatta no ka? which translates to, is it better never to have been born? Masahiro Morioka. Um, welcome to the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, Mr. Morioka. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you with us, uh, with me today. Um, so let me start out by asking you just some basic questions about yourself. Mm -hmm. In your words, who is Masahiro Morioka? Oh, yes, I, I am a Japanese um, philosopher, and now I teach philosophy and ethics at um, Waseda University. Uh, which is uh, located in the center of um, Tokyo City in Japan. And um, yes, I have published um, about 20 books in Japanese and um, philosophy, ethics, bioethics, and also on gender studies and sexuality studies mm -hmm. and, and the criticism of uh, modern civilization. Yeah. And I have proposed several um, concepts like um, painless civilization and herbivore, herbivore man and, and birth affirmation and others. So yes, I love um, doing philosophy. Um, yeah, this is my short <laughs> introduction from my, me, myself. Okay, wonderful, that's great. Um, uh, so uh, normally when I have a guest on this show, I mm -hmm. ask uh, all of our guests, why are you an antinatalist? But in your case, I suppose I will have to ask you, why are you not an antinatalist, uh, Masahiro? Yeah, um, I, I think I would like to talk about the, um, the concept of antinatalism later, later in details, but, uh, but first I would like to sure. say that, that um, yes, I, I am in sympathy with an antinatalism very much because um, antinatalism and anti-protect, um, procreationism in, in a kind of, uh, you know, existing in my mind. But um, I can't find any um, universal or logical uh, reason that all human beings should become antinatalists. So uh, because I am a philosopher, so I want to uh, see and, and, and be certain that um, such and such is, is an universally correct or not. Okay, so this is my point. So, so um, until recently, um, yes, I, I cannot find any uh, completely correct reason for believing that uh, antinatalist is universally correct, error-free. So this is one of the reasons I, I still do not believe that myself. That, okay. uh, and, I'm not I'm, the reason I'm not an antinatalist. Okay, um, can I ask you what what is it that you find unconvincing so far? Um, yeah, um, the the biggest problem is that, um, for example, there um, there are many antinatalists in Japan, and some of them um, argues that an antinatalist is almighty. You know. Uh -huh. They can refute um, all other um, philosophies on life mm -hmm. um, concerning the uh, coming into existence, but I do not think so. So um, okay. on this point, okay. I would like to um, um, talk about later. Sure, um, sure, no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, I'd like to uh, add that I'm not a pro um, natalist. Yes, you know, yes, yeah. So that 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 uh, the pro natalism has the similar same. Um, problem, yeah. you know, it is. I think it is impossible to um, argue that pronatalism is logically and universally correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's an important distinction, certainly, and yeah. that was that was something that you clarified in an email. But I was very curious about certainly. So we'll mm -hmm. we'll definitely talk about that more. Um, okay. <laughs> Antinatalist or not, I mean, there's no question that you seem extremely mm -hmm. fascinated by the subject. Um, yes. So so how did you get so interested in the subject of antinatalism? Yes. Um, first, I yes, I, I I can remember two reasons that I uh, that I was um, fascinated by this concept. And the first is um, I you know um, when I was very young, um, I had a huge interest in human extension, 
Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, human extinct extinction. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so um, but at that time I didn't have I didn't find any um, okay I didn't find any persuasive reasons that humans are uh, human race should not become extinct. Yeah. So when I was young, um, I yes I thought about these topics, but I couldn't find any reason that humans should survive forever. Yeah. But, but at the same time, I couldn't find the, the vice versa, you know, the, uh, the other way around. There is no, but the, I, I couldn't find no reason that human race should yeah. um, extinct. Yeah, so um, this, this kind of p problem um, captured my mind when I was young. And, um, and when I was a graduate student, I read the philosophy of Hans Jonas. Do, do you know the name of Hans Jonas? I, I know the name, but I have not read okay. any myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, he, is, um, he was a Jewish philosopher mm -hmm. and he studies uh, under German um, philosopher Martin Heidegger. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and he argued that um, humans must survive forever. And he, mm -hmm. uh, he argues in addition that this is an order, you know, Impaired uh, or <laughs> yeah. from somewhere, must, you know, yeah. must, yeah, must, human must. Yeah. So um, actually I love um, Hans Jonas's philosophy very much, but I do not agree with, with him on this point. Yeah. So, and yes, and this is one, uh, one, 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 one of the, one of the thing I, which comes to, to my mind. And the other thing is that I was um, I was studying um, bioethics, mm. you know, medical ethics, and I encountered the idea of wrongful birth lawsuits. Yes. yes. Mm. So um, this is a kind of a tricky lawsuit, as mm. all of you know. Mm -hmm. So so and so this is an um, idea that um, disabled person accused physicians who did not give information about right. her disability to her parents. So, and thinking that if my parents had known my disability, they would not have given birth to me. So uh, I think this is, um, yeah, this is very interesting kind of, you know, you know thinking. Yeah. And, but I did not, I, I was not fully um, persuaded by mm -hmm. this kind of um, argument. And so I noticed something very strange and in, the, uh, in, in this kind of argument, but I did not uh, clarify, you know, where, where is the, mm. the mistake uh, exist in, in, in this kind of uh, argument. So um, since that I have, I, I have been thinking um, about uh, the, this wrongful birth, um, the concept of wrongful birth. Yeah. And, um, uh, so I smell um, the scent of, you know, uh, the thought, I wish I had never been born in uh -huh. this um, argument, um, birthful, uh, wrongful birth argument. And I, yeah, so this is the second uh, thing which came to my mind when I uh, recall uh, why I was um, mm. fascinated by, you know, uh, the natalism in a broad sense, okay, yeah. broad sense. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I, I would like to um, add, uh, add, add um, a brief history of academic discussion in Japan, but is, uh, uh, is there okay to- uh, Absolutely, I would love that. that. Please. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'd be fascinated, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, um, so I remember, uh, yes, I try to remember the, the the academic discussion, and I I I I made a mis, uh, short mem memorandum, and um, yes, um, I've been I've been thinking philosophically about uh, myself, an um, affirmative approach and negative approach to coming into existence. In the case of myself, and um, I began this kind of thinking since 1980s, and after that, I proposed the the concept of birth affirmation in. 2008, and in 2010 or so, um, I happened to know David Beneta. Yeah, and his um, book on um, 
better never to have been. Mm -hmm. And I introduced his argument to, to Japanese audience yeah. in 2012 at um, a Japanese Bioethics Association's symposium. And um, so I think, you know, the, the introduction date of Benetas or um, more in general, the word antinatalism yeah. um, to Japan was uh, the year 2012, I think, okay. by me. Okay. Yeah. Probably, I don't know, <laughs> a, 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 anybody might have <laughs> Uh, introduced before me, but I I I don't I don't know about it. So I don't know either. Yeah, uh, yeah. So as far as I I can, as far as I know, um, this is me in 2012. Okay. And um, but also um, the uh, and there is a, uh, one of my friends and my colleague uh, Shuichi Kato, who he is a um, uh, professor at Meiji Gakuin University Tokyo. And he also introduced um, independently um, mm. Benetta's book in mm. uh, at almost simultaneously um, into Japanese. And mm. yeah, so I, I think me and um, Professor Kato was um, two of the first, first who introduced antinatalism into Japanese academy. Okay. I think. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and again, and also, um, it was um, Professor Kato who uh, first discussed the philosophy of coming into existence mm. um, in his um, 2007 book. So, and um, this is earlier than the introduction of Benetta's book. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So, the, the year 2007 is uh, one year after his um, Benetta's. Right. And there are never had to have been. Ben, so, yeah. and, Professor Kato um, published in Japanese the book Life and Individuality. Okay. And, and whole this book is dedicated to the philosophy of coming into existence. Okay. But he did not use the word um, antinatalism in that mm. book. But um, I, th I think um, this book uh, is a um, very important book in Japanese um, history of um, philosophy of antinatalism. Okay, and interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so uh, at that time, I had a discussion with him, and I was influenced by his work. Yeah. And after that, um, we discovered um, Benita's book. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, then I continued the research on antinatalist thoughts and my ideas about birth affirmation. And in 2017, um, Benita's book, um, this book was translated finally, into Japanese. Right, right. Oh, okay, and from this year, and many um, internet articles appeared, written by anonymous writers, and began to appear. Mm -hmm. And in nine, um, 2019, and um, last year, um, the Japanese philosophy magazine, um, Modern, Modern Thought, okay. uh, in right. Japanese, and um, Gendai Shiso, um, published a special issue on antinatalism, and and this whole issue was dedica um, dedicated to the the papers and essays on antinatalism, and in this um, issue, um, they uh, published the a one paper by um, David Benetta, okay, and an, another translation by um, Thaddeus Metz, yes, and yes. and many um, essays and papers written by Japanese uh, uh, philosophers. So um, this, uh, the publication of this um, magazine was a kind of an epoch-making um, mm -hmm. event in the history of an introduction of antinatalism in Japan. And yes, and um, yeah, and, and, and at, at the beginning of, beginning pages of this uh, magazine's issue, um, I, had, I had a discussion with a uh, with, uh, with, um, philosopher, Hiroshi Toya. So, um, you know, in, in this magazine, the, the beginning part was our discussion, um, Professor okay. and Toya and me. And okay. I, uh, we had discussion on antinatalism and then um, many um, articles and translations and essays follow. Okay, so, so okay, the discussion. Uh, yeah. Right. And in 
Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just okay. said um, that 2019 was the la uh, last two years ago. I know, it's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> so where is it gone? I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we all lost okay. last year. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so um, in October last year, 2020, my book was published. Um, and this is, a, yes, that's it. Yes, yes thank you. Um, so this is the first book that deals with uh, the history of antinatalistic thoughts from ancient yeah. times yeah. to the present day. Wow, okay, and, yeah. Uh, okay, so, and also I made my own uh, philosophical analysis on the, on yeah. the concept of antinatalism. The, and the, the publish, publishing house now saying that, you know, this book is um, selling very well. So, oh, good. That's great. Yeah, so uh, I think now um, the concept of antinatalism is um, becoming uh, prevalent in Japanese um, yeah. re uh, reader, readers now. That's wonderful. Yeah. 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 And, okay, so I, I'd like to move on to the, the history of, of an activism uh, sure. Yes. That. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but I, I'm not. I'm not really sure when the antinatalist activism bega began in Japan. Yeah. But um, I suppose their discussion began some point in 2010s. Really? Probably okay. mid um, 2015s, 16s, 17s. I I don't know, but uh, this is my impression, and. Well, I, if, if I if I can say real quick, I don't mean to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I will yeah. say that from my perspective, mm -hmm. I started to notice Japanese antinatalist YouTubers popping up like around 2016, 2017. Okay. Like, yeah, well, yeah. and I think it maybe have it was in large part due to that magazine article. Like, um, I, like a bunch of people mm -hmm. were were talking about it, reviewing it. I, I remember seeing links to it, but because of my language barrier, I couldn't extract mm -hmm. that much information. Um, uh, but, but you said, yeah. you, but you, uh, you said that the year was not on 2016? 16 or 17, probably 17, 17 I would say. Yeah. 17, so, okay, so the, the year on 2017 is the year um, Bennett, um, Benita's book was translated. Okay, right. There, okay, there so, you go. Yeah, okay. Right. So, so the ma sense. magazine was published in 2019. Oh, okay. My apologies. Oh, oh, okay, so but yeah. uh, the Benita's books in, 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 um, influence, I think. That explains okay. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but today there are many books mm -hmm. that um, dealt with on antinatalism. And, yeah. and the most um, ex extensively written book in, is the blog, blog, Japanese blog called the, the real argument. Do okay. you know the, this blog? Um, I don't. I've, I don't know that I've ever been on the blog, but there's also mm -hmm. a Twitter account associated okay, yeah. with it, so I'm familiar with with that. And I think they're also active a little bit on Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So um, the the subtitle of this blog is on community for suffering abolitionists. Abolitionists. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and so I, I think this blog is the more um, biggest one. Okay. on the internet. Um, yeah. the, this blog contains lots of um, translations and uh, uh, articles on um, antinatalism. Okay. And this yeah. blog started uh, in 2017, okay. the, the, the same year of Benetton's translation. Right. And um, yes, and this is interesting, you know, um, this blog has a um, strong emphasis so, of aphorism. Oh, really? How yeah, so? Really. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. I don't know the reason why, but uh, you know. So I I know that you are very uh, so Amanda. You you are very interested in um, aphorism. So I am. Uh, I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think you you have an uh, in, uh, very strong interest in if you if you read Japanese, you can uh, see their um, argument on aphorism. So uh, so that yeah. person that runs that account is an aphorist. I don't know because um okay. this is um this book uh, this blog is created and managed by an anonymous group. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. I'll have group to investigate that writer. further. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, but but I but I suspect you know um, some of that uh, anonymous members will be would be um, in your network. <laughs> possibly, possibly. <laughs> possibly, possibly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um. So it seems that uh, you know, um, current many Japanese antinatalist activists um, borrow um, their knowledge on antinatalism from this blog. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this is my um, guess. This is my guess. And um, yes, uh, in Japan recently, um, discussions on anti antinatalism have um, taken place mainly on Twitter. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and since last year, a uh, lot of um, Twitter posts and many, many opinions that have uh, now becoming to appear on Twitter. Yes. Um, That's so, fantastic. And, I mean, yeah, that makes so me happy. In, yeah. Yeah. So in Japan, um, from last year to this year, um, the word and the concept of um, antinatalism or antinatalists yeah, coming into, you know, uh, from uh, into the surface of, yeah. of a discourse on the internet and probably this year, um, this word will appear on the, the more an official, you know, um, mass media. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as I um, told you this, this month, um, I was interviewed by um, Nationwide newspaper yes, and yes. My, my, my article um, appeared on the nationwide newspaper so this kind of thing will um, occur th this year probably so that's more wonderful people, yeah yeah so, so, so more, more people are going to know find find this concept in japan this year yes yeah, so this is a brief history <laughs> of what? an in, in the introduction of an antinatalism in japan yeah, thank you so much for that. I mean, that's, I, I am always, um, one, of, one of my biggest reasons for doing this podcast is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always fascinated to see what, how antinatalism is existing in all different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, you know, it, it's been really difficult to sort of figure out what's going on in Japan and how big it's getting or how small it is or what's really going on. So that was a fascinating look, you know, from a firsthand account mm -hmm. of, of how it's existing in Japan. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, yeah, I, I think in the last year, I've definitely seen more um, activity from Japan, say on Facebook, definitely on Twitter, mm -hmm. which has been phenomenal to see definitely more, a lot more YouTube videos, which is really, really mm -hmm. great. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's, so that's wonderful. Um, was there anything that you want else you wanted to say about the history of it just now before we move on? Uh, no, or? no, no, that's okay. No, okay, no. I'm sure we'll come back just to some of that mm -hmm. in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious to ask you, I mean, people that are convinced of antinatalism, like why do mm -hmm. you think people like me say become mm -hmm. that way? Like what, like what, what is it about antinatalism in your, in your mind that, um, that w that we're uh, uh, like why do antinatalists become antinatalists why, uh, yeah, why are we most uh, of it okay. yeah um okay so um if antinatalism means uh, anti procreationism so i um, never um give birth to children mm -hmm. so i think um the reason is uh antinatalists do not want their children to experience any single um, hardships, pain, and suffering mm -hmm. after they are born. So this, this is, the, yes, I think this is the main reason they do not want to give birth to children. Yeah, so um, this is the, the main reason is that um, they or we do not want our children to experience um, absurd pains, mm -hmm. suffering, mm -hmm. and violence, you know. Um, according to an antinatalism, you know, forces someone to come in, into being in this world is a kind of a violence. Yes. yes. And so this is reasonable. Uh, I think this is reasonable. Yeah. 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 But as, uh, as many people have said, there is no more violent thing that you can do to a person besides create them or kill them. Like it's, yeah. those are the two, mm. big, you know, most impactful yes. things that you can do. And I, I yeah. yeah, so I certainly would think that that's reasonable. Um, I was going to maybe leave this for later, but since, uh, you know, I, I didn't know that you were familiar with an, an epilistic perspective at all, epilism mm -hmm. at all. Yes. So I have to mm -hmm. ask I me, mean, what do you think about um, forms of antinatalism that put the emphasis less on, um, you know, just the, the, the possible experience of the child, but sort of on life itself, like antinatalists who believe that, you know, this, that, that DNA is essentially flawed because it, it doesn't, it doesn't care what we go through. It doesn't care about the suffering. So it's more of a, it's more of a sentient issue that all sentient mm. creatures, you know, um, 
experience suffering and that the suffering isn't, isn't, doesn't exist for any reason, any good reason, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think about that more sentient-centric perspective? On yeah, that's no, sentient being. Um, yes, I think, um, I think um, David Bennett uh, also argues that uh, sentient beings yes. and the coming, in, coming into existence should, not, should never happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, this is also a reasonable uh, way of thinking that, um, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes I had a discussion with an antenatalist that um, if we say on sentient beings and centered way of thinking, we have to say that the aliens or <laughs> or um, AIs which can could uh, feel pain or suffering should never have been born should never have been born and I think it's, yeah so if we um, take on sentient being centered um, interpretation of antinatalism we should say that aliens or AIs which who um, have the possibility of an experience, experiencing pains, sufferings, and hardships should have never been should never have been born. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and this is an interesting point. And so, okay, so as I theory, I fully understand the antinatalism and ethelism and and sentient beings antinatalism. Yeah, so um, so if we, if I focus on their uh, structure of the, their theory itself, yeah. I can um, I can fully understand it. I, I can fully understand uh, what they mean, what they want want to mean. Yes. Okay. So I I I don't have um, any special um, disagreement with them. So, but mm -hmm. you know, um, my um, philosophically speaking, my point is that when they and go further and say that their their view only their view is correct. You see, mm -hmm. I ju then suddenly I I wanna say oh that's not true. <laughs> there, there should be um, there should be other way of thinking. So it's too. more. So, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. Yeah. So I I I think I think you can. Uh, understand what I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay, that's okay. So, um, please continue your question. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Uh, no, so it's more yeah. it's more of an attitude about the argument that you're that you're taking mm. fault with, essentially. That it's, um, mm. and I mean, I I certainly do think there is there is a certain a uh, part of arguing for extinction that does sort of shut everything else down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, 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 I suppose that um, that attitude is a bit built into just the, how the finality of the, of the argument itself. But I do, I do understand the um, uh, not, not liking that attitude that people attach to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I okay. definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, in addition, so, um, you know, I, um, yes, I like, you know, that, for example, David Bennett's uh, yeah. philosophical arg yeah. argument, and it is very interesting, but um, I, I object to his um, logic, because, mm -hmm. you know, um, in, in chapter two of his um, Bennett's book, he argues that his argument, the only, his argument is correct, and um, there have been many um, counter, counter argument against mm. Benito's theory, but, um, ben, but Benito himself had, has argued that all those um, counter arguments were wrong, you know. <laughs> so, do, you, do, so, you, do you find any of them to hold water? Do you like any of the arguments against Benito? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, there have been lots of um, um, dis discussion arguments um, concerning mm. Benito's um, theory. But mm. okay, um, I'd like to talk about later. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite all right. That's quite all right. <laughs> okay. uh, so, um, yeah. I'd like to um, hear, uh, um, I want to talk about um, definition of antinatalism. Yes, please. Uh, let's definitely yeah, do that. Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, yes, I, I, I think I'd like to define the concept of antinatalism in a, in a broad sense. 
Okay. Yeah, so because okay. you know, I'm a philosopher and I I'm a scholar, so sure. I like to encompass you know <laughs> all day and the every variation of yeah, and thoughts, sure, sure. ideas. Uh -huh. So um, I the broadest idea of an um, antinatalism is uh, this. I think antinatalism means the negation of a sentient beings coming into existence. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, in this. Yeah, by saying this, I mean coming into existence means both having been born and giving birth to children. Okay. Okay, so I think there are two aspects of coming into existence. And um, in your podcast, um, David Bennett uh, yeah. defines antinatalism as a, he says, um, philosophical position and social movement that assigns a negative value to sentient beings coming into existence. This mm -hmm. is what um, David Bennett um, agrees, uh, argues uh, in in the discussion yeah, in, it, in 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 your interview with his, him. Uh, based okay. on the on the Wikipedia definition, so it, mm -hmm. we were asking about the so I mean he uh, yeah it's a, it's like yeah. he, it was sort of funny because he'd never really read the Wikipedia definition before. Yeah, this was, was funny. Just based on yeah. that, but yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so um, he uh, used the words and I mean. Anyway, so negative attitude or negative value to uh, some things coming into existence. Sure. So, and um, basically, so I agree with him. So, um, mm -hmm. so Bennett uh, uh, seems to suggest that antinatalism anti contains two aspects. You know, you see, coming into existence means um, come to this world, having been born, mm -hmm. uh, and give birth. And this passive and uh, and positive, uh, passive and active, you know, and the, the two aspects. Come here and go <laughs> produce. It's, it's okay, a, right, right. The, 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 uh, these are two aspects of coming into be being. Yeah. And I also, and um, it was also interesting that I saw the, your um, interview with um, Karim Akeruma. Yes. Yeah, oh, um, this uh, this episode was uh, very very interesting. And yes, I love he, that episode. Uh, yeah, and he argued that um, there are at least two types of antinatalism. The first is a proto proto antinatalism, mm -hmm. and the other is an, an modern modern type of um, antinatalism. So he um, he thinks so he looked back on the the history of ideas and he. Um, went back to the, the age of um, Greece. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and he, find, he found that um, there has been um, proto-antinatalistic thoughts from the ancient Greece and the medieval periods and then uh, Schopenhauer. And the, the after Schopenhauer and the in this century, uh, there appeared the modern antinatalism. And and the, the he said that proto antinatalism is like an I wish I had I wish I had never been born on this kind of sentiment, and um, he said um, the more modern antinatalism means to never procreate our children. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think this kind of um, seeing looking back the history of a human um, history of ideas. I, I, I can agree with this idea, but mm -hmm. I have also a um, very small um, disagreement with him because um, mm. the, the reason is um, he, the words he, you, you, he used, uh, he used the words um, proto antinatalism mm -hmm. for uh, and meaning, um, meaning the, the sentiment or uh, proposition that I wish I had never been born. Uh, but you know, this kind of sent. Uh, this, I think this is an important part of antinatalism, and this kind of sentiment or way of thinking still exists now sure. in our society among us. Uh, so, um, so I, I, I don't use the word um, proto. Proto means on the basic or. Uh, mm, Okay, so my point is that that you know, um, when if if we you if we uh, separate proto antinatalism and modern 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 antinatalism, people might think that you know the modern 
antinatalism might be an advanced or sophisticated version of proto-antinatalism. But I think this kind of understanding is wrong. And, uh, can, can I, can I um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, is this idea clear to you? So, uh, yes, I, I, I think it, it is okay to um, distinguish proto, uh, the, 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 the um, Greek, Greek type uh, lament of, uh -huh. uh, and our choice of never um, procreate. So it, it is reasonable to divide these two. But I think in modern world, in current country, we have, many of us um, have, can have both ideas. So there is no uh, superior, inferior, you know, I don't think he I don't think he means to suggest mm. that it's a superior and inferior it's mm. that it's that basically the idea that that pre Benatar or pre mm -hmm. um what's the what's the name of the I'm I'm blanking completely on the name of the uh Koenig Koenig yeah, yeah, was, yeah. was the name of mm -hmm. that it, it hadn't really been a fully articulated ethical position so there were mm -hmm. There, were, there was only a certain extent to which the human race could sort of whisper an antinatalist understanding. Mm -hmm. And so that did mm -hmm. come in the form of, of a lamentation of birth at some point in time. But I don't think that it's saying that, I don't think, I, I don't think he would agree to the, to the idea that antinatalism that grew away from just doing that is what separates modern antinatalism from proto antinatalism I don't know that I fully agree with the proto antinatalism thing either because I think it gets I think it gets too messy because I mean I think where he's separating or I think and, and it's also uh, Katarina Lokmoniva who wrote the history of mm -hmm. antinatalism book recently like they both kind of use that term and I think where she's separating it is you know uh, modern antinatalism basically started when the the asymmetry came into play mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. this idea of sentiocentrism kind of started with antinatalism, mm -hmm. which is, uh, aside from um, Al, um, Al Miari, I'm pronouncing mm -hmm. his name wrong, there really hadn't been any of that. Um, so I, I'm not sure that that the distinction that you're making is, mm -hmm. is exactly what, what, what they are saying necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, but it, but it's, an inter yeah. it's interesting, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, not so, sure. um, yeah. yeah uh, so um, as I have just said, so this is a very, very small um, disagree disagreement. And basically, yeah. I agree with um, a a Karma's um, argument. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and my theory, you know, um, looking back on history, um, I think we have had three, three, three types of um, antinatalism in, okay. in the history of humankind. Yeah. And, they, and they, they, these three are and birth negation and re reincarnation negation okay. and procreation negation. And uh, okay, um, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, sure. these three uh, briefly, very briefly. Go and ahead the and take your time. The first one is an um, antinatalism found uh, firstly, firstly and found in ancient Greece. Um, the, yeah, I think this topic was an um, yeah, eloquently um, explained in Akermas and, and talk. So um, this is a negation of humans coming into existence and we can find this kind of um, antinatalism in Sophocles and, and also um, Greek poet, um, Theogonis and okay. other um, poets. And so they lamented the human coming, humans coming into existence in their poets and in, in their literature and their philosophy. Um, so they compare persons on coming into existence and persons not coming into existence and conclude that um, not coming into existence is better. Right. Okay. So, um, and they created a negative and pessimic view, pessimic view of life. And this antinatalism has influenced um, heavily on, on Schopenhauer and Ciola and David Benetta. And I call um, this kind of antinatalism uh, birth negation or the negation of birth. Okay, this is the first type. And, and the second type, um, 
this this uh, um, second type of antinatalism is found in ancient India. Um, I think this is very interesting and unique. So because um, in, in ancient um, in ancient in India, um, we can find a very unique antinatalistic thoughts, and this is the negation of human reverse after they die. And, and ancient, in ancient India, um, they believe that after death, a person's spirit, person's soul, uh, escape from a body, and they call uh, this spirit um, in Sanskrit an Atman, and in Pali, um, Atman. So uh, in any way, um, this spirit or soul re, uh, es escape from uh, my body and reincarnate to other creatures. Right including human beings. So um, in their worldview, you know, this reincarnation goes and goes and forever. So, you know, the death reverse, death reverse, death reverse, and forever. So, um, but you know, they think basically life is um, filled with, full of suffering. Yeah. So uh, if we take this kind of view, you know, human uh, life, human suffering continues forever. Uh, yeah. This is very miserable. So, um, yeah. yeah, so the, the um, philosophers, Indian, uh, Indian philosophers think that they um, think how they can escape these endless sufferings. So um, in order to avoid this endless suffering, um, the Buddhist monks, for example, um, Buddhist monks practice hard and try to reach the state of nirvana. Yeah. Mm. So um, by reaching nirvana, a, a person's re reincarnation stops. Okay, so then there is no suffering continues. There is no, mm -hmm. no suffering, okay, in, in the future. And so he or, she, he or she will never be born to any world because a reincarn reincarnation stops yeah. So um, there is no birth. Okay, so um, I think this is the second type of um, antinatalism, mm. you know, this, because um, this is a negation of reborn to mm. any world. And so um, in order to attain um, the same mm. nirvana, nirvana, they um, tried very, very hard to practice, you know. Uh, and so Yes, so, so I, I call this type of uh, antinatalism um, reincarnation negation. Okay. And also, even today, uh, if you go to um, Sri Lanka and other um, Southeast Asian countries, you can, f you can find there are many, many uh, Buddhist uh, practitioners. Mm -hmm. and, and though they even today they pray, um, they are um, doing practice aiming at and getting nirvana. So this is not the story of the, in the past, but also uh, in the current, in the present day, many people in Asia are trying to uh, escape from reincarnation and stop their uh, rebirth to any world. So I think this is an, a second type. And, but of course, so those um, Buddhist monks do not procreate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, you know, they do not think that everyone should give up procreation. I know. Yeah, you know, this is a very interesting point because, yeah. um, okay, imagine if I, I am a Buddhist monk. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a Buddhist, but imagine that I, I were a Buddhist monk and I, I want to, um, escape from this reincarnation, but it is literally impossible for me in this world, this time. Yeah. Okay, so it's because it is very, very hard to um, stop reincarnation. So, um, of course, and I, um, I very hard try, yeah, try to, uh, so, so I practice very hard this time, but uh, in the end, I die and I reincarnate reincarnate to other animals and then other animals and other animals and then 
I will come to this world in the future again as a human being. Mm -hmm. And then I, I restart my practice, you, you see. And, but um, it, is, it is again impossible to the, my second uh, life. And then I die and reincarnate to my third life and impossible. And then, 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 then in the very, very, very long future, I might attain nirvana in the very, very long future. So um, in, order, in order for me to get nirvana, we, I have to live human beings life many, many times. So in order, in order for this to happen, someone in the future have to procreate some baby, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There should be baby in the future because um, there is no babies in the future. I can't find any um, human beings I can come into, right, <laughs> into right. his or her body. Oh, right, okay. So um, this is very interesting because, you know, the ultimate goal is to uh, stop reincarnation. Mm -hmm. But in order to um, attain that ultimate goal, we need procreation. We need mm -hmm. future babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so this is a kind of a tricky point in, right. in the Indian, Indian type of um, antenatalism. Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah. And the, the third type is um, contemporary antenatalism. Okay. okay, so this is, uh, yeah, our, your uh, yeah. position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the universal negation, yeah, of procreation. So as mm -hmm. a scholar, and I want to say that um, antinatalism should be considered the combination of, of at least these three ways of um, thinking. So this is my position of uh, looking at uh, um, the concept of um, antinatalism. So uh, from my point of view, only, only looking at today's anti-procreationism is um, kind of a narrow-minded. Yeah, so uh, of course um, I know um, in the present day currently um, almost all, um, I don't know, but may, uh, at least many yeah. antinatalists stress the, that an antinatalism should, should be anti-procreationism. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah but, okay, of course uh, I understand their points of view, but as a scholar I have I have to add the other two uh, two types of antinatalism. The the one the the one is an ancient ancient Greek type antinatalism, and the other is an ancient Indian type antinatalism, because on both types of antinatalism still living vividly in our society. Society, if you we look at you know the whole world whole population and and in uh, yeah i think um so i don't think this is a this is a majority idea <laughs> uh, you know the majority position i i i'm you know i i think um my position is on minority view i i would have to say so i i don't i hope yeah. i don't mean to be in any rude way rude by saying so i mean i think mm -hmm. that well first off a great deal many Antinatalists. I, I, I would probably say the majority of antinatalists all over the yes. world are atheists. Yeah. So mm -hmm. concepts like reincarnation, you know, it, you know. I mean, I think I think the only corollary to a conversation mm -hmm. regarding you know reincarnation is, is just basically the concept that you know if you believe that 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 procreation is wrong, if you believe that you know. Uh, to bring new people here is is unethical. Um, then you know basically what you know you keep on basically reliving. We we all sort of sort of it just in a in a, in a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not not in a not in an actual sense, but just in a metaphorical sense. It's like we keep mm -hmm. we keep being brought here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like like people of the future are are just as real essentially as I am right now. They're just not born yet, but they will experience the same horrors and and joys and i mean their sentience is is it's a blueprint right like we're all just basically um xerox machines creating xerox machines you know what I mean? as as my friend yeah, yeah. says mm -hmm. so it's like their sentience is not going to be vastly 
different than my own. So it, th that, in a sense, is a kind of reincarnation, although completely removed from any sort of religious, you know, mm -hmm. not, it's not the way that the word would typically be used. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to in any way to discredit that this is um, not a, con I mean, I think it is a conversation worth having. I mean, it's, it's um, I also don't know that, you know, I don't, I don't really see, I have actually, honestly, I, I have actually, there's a, there's a couple of different videos online of, of, of uh, Japanese Buddhists talking about antinatalism. I, I'm always curious as like what their opinion of it is. Um, but I don't really see um, Buddhists wanting to identify as antinatalists. Like that's, it, it seems like there's, there's a, that's taking it too far because embr embracing the idea of extinction, as you're saying, like there's no, there's no, if you're embracing extinction, there's nowhere for you to go later on. And so that's mm -hmm. sort of anathema. And also, you know, it, it, India is one of the biggest sort of bastions of antinatalist thought right mm -hmm. now. Like that's where a huge, that's where child free India is. And, um, and, yeah. and, and, and I think, I think it's safe to say they're more leaning towards sort of an atheistic style of antinatalist. So I don't hear from that, voice very often. I'm not saying it's not there, and it's very fascinating that you bring it up, and I, I appreciate it, but I, I, I don't often hear about this anywhere, really. So it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, this, this is a very interesting point, and this also, um, our discussion now is um, heavily and depend on the, the, the definition of antinatalism itself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The, so, so I think we have to we have to continue discussing this point. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 And and also I, um, yes, I, I have used um, uh, two words: um, um, antinatalism and antinatalistic thoughts. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I think this is also an, in, an important point because um, I think um, antinatalistic thoughts can be found in Buddhist literatures. But, sure. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it is not sure whether antinatalism itself can be found in the Buddhist literature. Be yeah, because antinatalism is an ism. Ism means um, yeah. a kind of a force to um, everybody should do this and this and such and such. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is a very delicate point yeah. uh, that um, whether um, religions like Buddhism has the, this kind of um, universal um, kind of a <laughs> imperative, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but so um, some someone say that, uh, yeah, some scholars say that um, Buddhist thoughts is a more individual individualistic mm. um, kind sure. of uh, um, practice and thoughts. So, okay. So like, um, I will do this. This I, I will go this way. I don't know uh, which path you follow. Okay, this kind of unsentiment uh, exists mm. in, the, in, in the ancient Buddhist thoughts uh, that we are um, practicing. So, okay, so the, the, this is the one point I'd like to um, sure. add. So, yeah. and, and uh, reinca reincarnation, you know, uh, it is very interesting because, um, you know, um, due to, uh, ac according to, according to, um, um, research and uh, uh, very big, big um, extensive research. Seventy percent of Japanese women, mm. after, under the under the age of forty, believe reincarnation. Mm, interesting. Yeah, vast mm. majority of uh, young um, Japanese women believe uh, some kind of um, some type of reincarnation. So. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think if you, uh, if the antinatalists um, try to um, prevail the idea, you are idea in Japan, you have to persuade these um, seventy percent young Japanese women. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. So and the, those uh, they believe that before they born, they were okay. So they believe that before they were born. There was not nothing, you know. Okay. Yeah. So right. Before they are born, they were some other beings, and after they die, they will become some other beings. So, yeah. And so, um, 
in order for you to prepare your ideas, you have to say something about the consistency because um, between your idea and reincarnation. Interesting. Kind of, okay. Yeah, uh, world, world view. Yeah. Uh, this is in. I think um, I'd like to watch how you try to persuade those um, people in Japanese people. I I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, at, since we've tried to put together Antinatalism International, we've mm -hmm. come across all kinds of things like this, where it's like the way that you have to argue antinatalism to different cultures varies mm -hmm. so unbelievably greatly from culture to culture. And there's all kinds mm -hmm. of things that I yes. would personally never expect to, to come across. So mm -hmm. I, that's fascinating. I had no idea about that. May I ask you, um, you know, I'll, we'll talk a little bit later about sort of the antinatalist community in Japan, but like, would you say that there are, is it mostly men or are there already women within, hmm. within the antinatalist community in Japan? I, yeah, um, it's impossible to um, find an answer to that because, you know, yeah. for example, on Twitter, it is impossible to identify the yeah. uh, real yeah. gender sex of, of, the, of the account. Yeah. So yeah. it is impossible. But in my impression, there are, um, yeah, um, I, 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 I can find female like account, many female like accounts yeah. on Twitter. So um, I think there were both sexes, both genders. Okay, interesting. In, in, yeah, in Japanese um, uh, uh, social ne networks and services. That would be an interesting thing eventually uh, with, with all cultures and all languages to do mm. um, more sort of focused statistic, you know, work or do polls, that kind of thing, yeah. you know, with mm. all these individual communities. That's only been done once, um, oh, you know, in really? sort of a small number of, of English speaking antinatalist mm -hmm. communities. And some of mm. that information was published in one of the um, antinatalism magazines, but it was only mm. a very, you know, it was small. So that's another thing we hope to do with Antinatalism International is like do sort mm -hmm. of focused, you know, getting some of these statistics, getting some of these numbers, because really it's, there's a lot of unknowns right now. I, I hope I'm not taking us too far afield. Um, we talked about a, a lot in, in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, when you were speaking about sort of like the, the modern antinatalism and also sort of this, this antinatalism that has a concern with, with, uh, with reincarnation, as well as the ancient Greek sort of style of antinatalism mm -hmm. that you're talking about, does, how does this fit into um the antinatalism sort of chart of categories that you've created oh uh, yeah you did you, you sort of does for those for our audience that might not be aware you sort of have this this uh this amazing looking sort of diagram of it started out as eight but it's now nine different categories of <laughs> antinatalism so do those three categories that we just spoke about fit into that or is that a little bit of a different thing please yes um yes i think um these three categories can can be fit can fit it fit, can fit into this um diagram but you know um i okay for listeners um i'd like to explain <laughs> what is sure. that that, that sure. diagram so, uh, um yeah so, um after an i published my book um that that was an in october uh, last year so then 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 i had a discussion on twitter um, with um, antinatalists and other people who are interested in antinatalism. And then I, I found that there are um, many types of antinatalistic thoughts, so antinatalists in Japan on Twitter. So um, there are some quarrels between them. So, and then I find out it, it might be that, you know, um, there are several types of antinatalists, yeah. but yeah. they themselves do not uh, realize that there are variations in among yeah. the antinatalists. So, okay, so then I, um, in, yeah, so after the publication of my book, I uh, began to um, write, write a chart of um, classify mm. antinatalists. Mm. Um, in, so then, then I um, created uh, eight categories. And, and, and then, um, I uploaded on Twitter and I had, had a discussion with them. And so I, I, I realized I omitted a um, very important one. Then I um, re revised uh, three times, four times. And, mm. and now um, the, the most, um, uh, the newest one is um, this year, um, January 7th uh, mm. version. 
And but this is also, uh, you know, I'm now in the in, in the process of um, refining my um, this chart. So did uh, uh, and I, I'm I'm gonna I have to um, include include more uh, many types. So for example, if it is okay. into my yeah. And um, by the way, I in in the current um, chart I categorized yeah. um, nine types of um, antinatalism. The first is um, Benetau's type. Yeah. This is um, um, based on asymmetry between pleasure and pain. Yeah. And the second, uh, second one is a uh, pain avoidance theory, which is uh, if, if we, we were not born, we would never feel pain. Okay, mm -hmm. this kind mm -hmm. of thinking. And the third type is a Russian roulette type. Okay. This is um, if we continue giving birth, uh, at least one baby will become very unhappy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, okay, this is a third type, and and the fourth is a non-existence of consent. Um, this is this is the one I um, added to my uh, first one. Um, the non-existence of consent is, uh, yeah. So the baby did not give their consent, so we should not procreate. Yeah. Okay, uh, and the, mm. the fifth is a child-free type, and this is an all births are births are bad. But I do not force this idea to others. Okay, this is a right. child-free type, yeah. antinatalism. Okay, and the fifth is a negation of one's own birth. Right. This is a coming into existence is, is bad, and this is an, an ancient Greek type. Yeah. Um, birth affirmation, a uh, birth negation, and this um, seventh is an anti-procreationism. Mm. This is an like. Coming into existence is not necessarily bad, but giving birth is always bad. Okay. Okay. Right, right, right. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the next is um, genuine, child, child free. Um, this is an I do not give birth, but I do not force this idea to others. So I, uh, this might be, um, could be included in the category of antinatalism, but now I think this it is better. We should not include this in in the category of antinatalism. So I think child genuine child free position is um, might be different from certain antinatalism. But but this is a point of the, um, dispute. I think it's a difficult yeah. one. Yeah, I mean it's definitely yeah. anti procreation, which is kind yeah. of. Because I'm I'm always trying to find these categories too, and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's like so I I try to I try personally I try to go from that above view of anti procreation and see what fits mm. in there. But yeah, it's yeah. tricky. It's tricky. Yeah, tricky. And and the last one, the ninth, is an um, I call anti promotion of procreationism, and um, this is um, um forcing someone to give birth is always bad. Yeah, for example, uh, in, in, ja in Japan and in any other world, feminists has yeah. arg uh, have argued that pre do not force women to give birth. Yeah. Okay, so this kind of um, argument. Um, so I call this a um, negative attitude to promotion of pro procreationism. But this, is, this one is also, um, do, um, I don't know, uh, I think it, 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 might, it may be tricky to include this type in the category of antinatalism. Mm, this, uh, this is also a uh, yeah, point, point of this, we have to discuss more. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the other thing that I think is difficult about just uh, about this is that, I mean, these are many of the categories that you're listing are certainly arguments yes. that antinatalists use. But I mean, I can say for myself that like, I mm -hmm. use a lot of those. Like, like, I'm very convinced by a lot of those arguments. Like, it's totally Russian, in my opinion, it's totally Russian roulette, but it's also mm -hmm. goes against the idea of consent and it's yes, also yes, yes. an imposition. So I guess I fit a lot of these different categories. Yeah. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, so of course. So, so um, the, this chart um, only um, distinguishes um, yeah. um, categories and as a uh, Max Weber said, and the ideal tips, you know, the ideal type. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you.
ar the archetypal mm -hmm. types of antinatalism. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. How, where would, do you have any thoughts on like where a movement like vehement would fit into this or birth strike um, and ethelism? Mm -hmm. Are they, are they separate categories to be at? Well, you, you've spoken a little bit about ethelism. I'm curious as to yeah, how yeah. you would define it. Yeah. Yes, I, I think those movements and thinking thoughts should be included in my charts. Mm. So uh, yes, I, I will try, you know, um, I, uh, <laughs> I just started to try to write, uh, write this diagram, this figure only yes. two months ago. Okay. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, okay, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's an important project, it definitely is. So I, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm and I think I will refine, refine my um, this chart and um, include more and in, in any way I put it in my article or something and, and yeah. publish on the internet um, in, the in the near future. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, very, very nice. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I, I, no, I think, I, like, as I said, I think it's an important project and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious where you're, what it will look like at the end of where you'll, mm -hmm. all these different categories, where you'll take it to. So um, mm -hmm. I hope that's something um, that can be translated for everybody too, uh, mm -hmm. as well down, down the line. Um, yes. I mean, ju just out of curiosity, we, we've talked a little bit about the definition uh, and, and you've spoken towards that a little bit. I mean, obviously antinatalism does not have a dictionary definition in any yeah. language in the world. I mean, I've, I've heard rumblings about there being a, uh, some Korean dictionary that has it defined, although I don't know if that's true and I don't know, I've never seen it, so I don't know. Um, so if, if antinatalism were to get into the dictionary tomorrow, how would you define it? As a, as, a, as a quick definition. Yeah. Yes, as I, ju as I just um, said be, um, just now, mm -hmm. I would like to say that um, antinatalism is the negation of by sentient beings coming into existence. I see, okay, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just going to, you may have already kind of spoken about, like, I just want to see if maybe we could, uh, if there's something we missed, but um, it, it seems like there is this great amount of disagreement regarding how antinatalism is defined in Japan. I mean, the Japanese antinatalists that I've talked to often seem sort of frustrated by this idea that it's defined in Japan as, I didn't want to be born. Um, and I guess that's, uh, from what I've been told, that's sort of a disagreement about how the, the title of Benatar's book has been translated. Um, so, yeah, I'm just curious about that. I, I, guess, I guess more so I'm curious about, um, you seem to define it a little differently, I guess, or, or sometimes the emphasis that you put uh, on, on the way you talk about antinatalism is more of a, um, a, bit, of, a, bit, of a, a bit of a personal, um, it's a bit more personal than, I mean, obviously you are also an ethicist. I mean, you, you do take, you do take it from a, a, an ethical point of view. Um, but yeah, I mean, do, do, do you find that there's a lot of disagreement about how it's defined in Japan or there's, do you find similar amounts of, of frustration from other Japanese antinatalists about how it's often? Oh uh, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, this is a kind of a tricky question because, you know, um, the tr translation translation of Benita's book appeared in here 2017, so three oh, three years ago. Yeah. So just three years. Okay. So only three years have been passed have yeah. passed since then. So then um, the discussion between um, among the antinatalists and also discussion between antinatalists and the scholars like me began yeah. last year. So um, it is natural that there has not been kind of a consensus about the using the word or concept, yeah. uh, the newly appeared concept. So with the, uh, this, so this antinatalism newly appeared concept. So it is natural that there has not been so much consensus on, on the usage, using of this concept. And, all, and, and again, um, yeah, um, in, okay. So you, talk, you talked about, um, you mentioned about the translation of the Benetta's book. Yeah. And I think 
and Japanese, the title of the Japanese translation of the Benetta's book is a very good translation okay. of the original one. So okay. there is no uh, misunderstanding about the, okay. the, the title of his book. But the problem is um, his own um, decision to make, you, you know, his own decision, well, why he did decided to uh, give, give that title to his book, better never to have been, because um, mm -hmm. just um, just reading the title of Benita's book, we would think that Benita's book will uh, would um, deal with the ancient type, ancient Greek type um, mm. lament. Okay, so so if um, if Benita had been um, wishing to discuss in his book the the uh, the negation of procreation, mm. that book should should have been, for example, why we should procreate or something like that. Okay. 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 So um, one of the problem is the, the the original English title of Benita's book. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So um, when yeah when that book uh, was translated and appeared in Japanese before the Japanese audience, uh, we see the title literally. Uh, mm. uh, it, it is um, it might be bad to for us to coming into existence. Yeah, uh, but yeah. it is very natural to uh, interpret the the translated or original uh, title of his book. And just reading his book, this is a very <laughs> so his argument was very. Uh, very hard to understand, <laughs> complicated, very hard to understand, and difficult. So um, I don't know. Yeah. So basically, uh, in the first part of his his book, he talked, he discussed about the comparison between existence and non-existence. On yeah. the second part, he talk, he talks about the the ethics of procreation, and he gave a negative answer to that procreation. Mm. And, and so um, his book, this itself, is a combination of um, um, our lament of uh, our sentiment of lament of coming into existence, ourself, and um, the negation of our procreation. So uh, yes, okay. So this is one um, one thread of. Uh, 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 one, I don't know how, how to say it in, in, in English. Okay, but, but this is one point. The other one is that there have been um, anti-procreationists in Japan and okay. they didn't have voice. Okay, so yeah. they did not have voice. Um, they thought that we should not procreate, mm -hmm. but they did not have voice to express their ideas and they and suddenly um, Benita's translation and the idea of anti-natalism um, came to Japan, and they um, noticed that there is a word mm -mm. which represent their um, ideas. Yeah. Never yeah. procreate. We should never procreate. Okay, so. Um, and then those um, those who had had anti procreationist ideas uh, flock together, you know, on Twitter, and right. they, they, right. they are, yeah, and they are now um, f um, now come to and they are now forming a kind of uh, loose uh, networks and network on of the anti natalist ideas. So yeah. Okay, so this is the second point, and the third is um, is myself, me myself, because um, I am the person who introduced Benita's book and anti anti natalism yeah. in Japan. But you know, as I have as I have already um, said, um, in my personal history, I have been I have been continuously thinking of the philosophy of you know, life and death and coming into existence and this kind of life and this matters. Okay, from from um, since the 20th century. So 
in my personal history, um, I had been thinking about this topic philosophically until I found Benetta's book and the, and the word antinatalism. So it is very natural for me to um, stick to my own philosophical problem. So sure, the, yeah, and, and my, my own philosoph so philosophical problem is um, um, my having been born right. to, yeah, this is, um, yeah, okay, personally speaking, this is, this is the most important philosophical topics for me uh, as an existential person. Okay, so um, I, yeah, honestly speaking, I interpreted kind of a heavily Benita's book, Benita's argument and some uh, antinatalistic thoughts um, towards my own personal and uh, philosophical, you know, yeah. um, problem solving, you see. Right. So, um, yeah, yes, this is a third, third point. And now, last year, from last year to this year, <laughs> there is a kind of um, a dispute between me and antinatalists on Twitter yeah. that uh, they say that, you know, antinatalism should mean that never, you know, the denegation of procreation. Yeah. But, my, but, but, my, but I think, you know, I myself as a philosopher, my main concern is then the, the affirmation of my having been born and the, 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 or the, you know, the evaluation of humans having mm. been born. Okay. So the, of course, um, I, I'm, I, am str I have a strong interest in, of course, the human procreation itself. Of course, of course. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Mm. But for me, for my, um, yeah, um, but yeah. for myself, um, my existential, the most important existential problem is um, my having been born and humans having been born and how, how to evaluate our, uh, yeah, coming into existence. So, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you can, yeah. you, uh, you can. No, uh, I, I uh, understand, I think I understand. What I, what I mean, yeah. for yeah. I mean, so um, yeah. there is um, a kind of a bat, bat, uh, you know, battle <laughs> war between <laughs> uh, uh, me, myself, and, and um, Twitter, uh, and, and some antinatalists. But, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this, this is uh, one, one thing that can be seen in current anti-natalist uh, scene. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, 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 okay, uh, um, am I, okay, okay. <laughs> no, 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 I, I just wanna say, I think the way you explain it is very valid. I, I mean, I, I, I understand mm -hmm. it from that. I, I mean, it's, it, it's been hard for me to completely understand what the argument is because obviously I'm, it's in a mm -hmm. language I, I can't speak and it's all through, you know, through translate, but I, I, I really do appreciate the way you're understanding it. And I do think that in the way you're explaining it, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. having a focus of how one feels about their own having been brought into existence is it's a perfectly yeah. valid thing to explore. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, 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 I also, I guess I, I, I do, person, I'm just speaking personally, I, I like to sort of keep the philosophical aspects of it and the personal aspects of it sort of separated, that it's sort of a separation of, uh, Again, as my friend in Mendem says, sort of a, a, a separation of philosophy and psychology, and how that's sort of very important. But I'm also an artist, so it's like I like to combine both of those, you know, yeah. together in that kind of expression. So I certainly wouldn't be, you know, I, I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not one that would argue with you about that being valid or not. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> unlike, unlike perhaps some of the other uh, Japanese antinatalists you've encountered. Although I do, I do also understand their perspective. Um, to some to some degree. So fascinating. Thank you for your window into that. I've been mm -hmm. very, very, very curious about that. Um, unless there was something else you wanted to say about that, I'd love to speak about your book a little bit, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so you so very kindly um, sent me a copy of your book, which I'm so happy to own. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very happy to be able to add it to my collection. Um, and you so kindly uh, annotated uh, the index for me a little mm -hmm. bit um, with, with a couple of uh, just things in English, and I really do appreciate that so much as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's really, really great. I was really excited to see that. Um, so what, 
I mean, this is maybe a, sm a small point about the book, um, but I have to ask, I mean, I noticed that one of the annotations you made uh, made reference to one of my favorite books, which is Goethe's Faust. So can you tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about the way in which you're using um, that text? Okay, yeah. um, but before that, I would like to uh, introduce... Um, yeah, uh, please, please. The, 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 the chapters. Starting in a bit of a strange place, place. yes. Yeah, yeah listeners. Please tell me about the book, yeah. yeah. Um, in, in, in this Japanese book, I, in, in, uh, in, well, okay, so in chapter one, I, I discussed the Gates first. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and, and the second, in, in, in the chapter, chapter two, I discussed uh, ancient Greek, ancient Greek antinatalism and also um, Benetta's um, argument. Yeah. And, yeah. and the chapter three, I talked talk about uh, Schopenhauer. Mm -hmm. And in uh, chapter four, I talked about uh, Upanishad and uh, yeah, ancient India's and Veda and Upanishad. And chapter five, I talked about um, Buddha's, Buddha's mm -hmm. and um, Buddhism. And chapter six, I talked about Nietzsche. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, the reason why I um, took up um, the philosophy of Nietzsche is that, it be, that is because um, Nietzsche's philosophy looks like just the opposite of antinatalism because um, yeah. he stressed the importance of uh, life, right. the value of life and the meaning of life. Okay, and the, the last chapter, um, this is the longest chapter in this book. Now in chapter seven, in, uh, in the first half of this chapter, I criticized Benetta's argument. Mm -hmm. And the second half, um, the part, I discussed my, uh, my theory of birth affirmation and so, um, this, this, yeah, this is um, the the construction of the of the my book, and I believe this is the first book, Japanese book, which deals with, um, yeah, that topic of antinatalism. Yes. Um, in in this entire book, yeah. um, okay, and um, and in in the chapter one, I talk, I discussed about the, the Goethe's Faust. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm very happy that you li you liked also the big gate is false false. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I yes I I I remember I can remember that I when I was on junior high junior high junior high school student I read gate is um, yeah. false and very very impressed and influenced by his uh, um, yeah um, this. Uh, literature and yes and in the last last scene of the part part one of mm -hmm. first uh, so there is a um female uh, prota protagonist and great him mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, she was an uh, she is an first first girlfriend mm -hmm. and but she kills her parents and she killed the baby which, which was born between her and the Faust. Mm -hmm. And so this is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Faust um, met, met her, uh, meet, meet, meet her and cries. So uh, the first, 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 for the first time, uh, understand that her girlfriend kills her parents and her, their baby and went mad. Okay, so the Faust, Christ, I wish I had never been born. Yes. I'd forgotten this, that, yeah. Yeah, so yes, this, um, literally, this sentence appeared yeah. in the last part of the, uh, was a part, the last part of part one. And then just after that, and Faust cries to greet him, you should continue living. Yeah. And so this is a cry of um, the affirmation of life. Mm. So um, Goethe's Faust is a um, story that unfold between these two thoughts, you know, mm. yeah. the, the idea of birth affirmation, uh, I'm sorry, the, the idea of birth negation and the idea of affirmation of birth. So this is a two pillars of which um, penetrates the whole um, the book Faust. Mm. And also, it is interesting that you know, uh, in in when the the devil Mephist, Mephisto, uh, when he first appeared before the Faust, he says that um, 
the best thing would have been nothing came into existence. Yeah, so this is uh, Mephisto's philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is very interesting because um, this is a very strong argument, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, Mephisto say nothing, it is better, nothing came into existence. Okay, so not, in, not only uh, living things, but also everything. Yeah. Every matter. Yeah. So the, everything should have been nothing, you know. Right. So, yeah, this is a very, very strong argument that is more uh, stronger than anti today's antinatalism. So, uh, yeah. It, yes. So, um, I, yeah, the reason why I discussed uh, Faust in the in the the chapter one of my book is that I can because I remember this part. Yeah, oh, fascinating! So, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a great find. I mean, I I I also read it in junior high, but I haven't read it since. But it left a yeah. huge impression on me. But I'd forgotten mm -hmm. those details. So that's fascinating. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, unfortunately, because of the language barrier, I, could, I can't read the book, although I'd love mm -hmm. to. I, I hope that maybe down the line, um, there can be a translation into English mm -hmm. or in other languages. I would absolutely love to see that. Um, but I mean, what can you tell me? I, you know, I, I, would, I would have loved to have written more detailed you know, questions about the book you know, had I been able to read it. So if you could just tell me you know, about, what's, you know, about the book, the process of writing it and the arguments that you lay out. Uh, I'd happy, be happy okay. to know anything about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, this is, uh, you know, uh, my first attempt to, my first attempt to uh, create my own philosophy of life. Mm. So um, this is not done, you know, independent book. This is the first book or first part of my whole, uh, my philosophy, uh, you know, because um, I'm now writing the second part, the second oh. part, which see this, uh, uh, the, the second part of this book, and um, which is called, uh, the title of which is um, The Philosophy of Birth Affirmation. So, um, my second book will be more systematic one, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, okay. like ben Bennett as well, you know, um, systematic, that, that means um, I would like to um, construct the, the, you know, the, 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 the structure of the systematic philosophy as a philosophy of life and death. Yeah. And so I'm now trying hard to um, making um, those um, parts of, of the discussions and the logical construction and such and such, such things yeah. now. And before doing that, I wanted to looking back our history of ideas, mm. you see, in, in the West and in the East, um, how our ancestors have been thinking about the, about the values and philosophy of coming into existence. So, um, and ten year, almost ten years ago, I started to research on the, on how and the, the past philosophers or a novelist and those, pe those people, um, were thinking about um, yeah. these things, and and so in the process of the of my attempt, I found Benita's book and the word antinatalism. Okay, so um, <laughs> yeah. So this book, um, in 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 this book, I um discussed very this. Uh, so I took up some in very important and famous uh right famous philosophers like Schopenhauer yes. and Nietzsche and um, of course and um, Benita and other. Um, as the philosophers and and um, Indians and in 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 Indian scriptures like Upanishads and ancient Buddhist scriptures, and um, I I tried to shed light from the perspective of antinatalism. Then what kind of um, thing appears? Um, 
when I when I shed light for, from the perspective of Antan is yeah. uh, what kind of interpretation can be made on those um, thinkers? So um, this book is not not uh, not an, an kind of an anthology, you know. Okay, you know? sure. But sure. It, it's so <laughs> an anthology means that if we read Schopenhauer, we can we can find such sentences, such sentences, and this right. kind of thing. Right. But uh, I would like to um, reach the essential part of, for example, Schopenhauer's philosophy. Yeah. Which, what, what is the essential part? When, if we look, if we shed light, if, if we look at Schopenhauer from the perspective of antinatalism or the value of coming into existence and so forth, you see. So um, in each chapter, I go deep into the the thinkers um thinking mm -hmm. and i try i try um i try to find out their um try to find out the jewels you know yeah mm. yeah in in their thoughts and also the limitations of their way of thinking mm. yeah so um in this sense um this is a kind of yeah this is an academic book Yes. academic books and i read uh, <laughs> yeah there I, I i i read almost every nietzsche's <laughs> books oh for this <laughs> reading and yeah. this, this kind of thing yeah, yeah so it yeah. took 10 it, it took almost 10 years to wow. write wow uh, yeah this book so um it, uh, i'm i'm sorry but because uh, you know I, <laughs> for me as an author it is very hard for me to Summarize briefly. No, that, uh, <laughs> my, I, my I, I, of course, of course. No, I understand. I understand. No, no, no. I, I just, I, I'm, I, you know, again, I wish I could read it. I, congratulations, yeah. first of all, on its um, publication. But, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. But um, interestingly, um, this book is now um, warmly welcomed by readers. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, um, warmly welcomed by um, philosophy uh, specialists. Yes. But but also um, general readers, uh, yeah. So I search my you know about my book. I can find many positive uh, reactions from uh, many people. But also at the same time, I have harshly criticized by antinatalists. <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, they've had yeah, a bit so, of a negative yeah. reaction to it, from what I understand. Yeah, harsh reactions and kind of, uh, have come. Yeah, now still coming to me, and but this is also but um, the, this phenomena is also interesting for me, and. And I, I, I have already um, discussed about this a little bit. Um, yeah. Just now, yeah, be, uh, yeah. already. Um, then, interestingly, um, you know. Okay, so uh, you have just said that you are you are an artist, so you yes. you do not you so you don't um, divide um, art itself and your life. You can, okay, you connect. Yeah, art, yeah. Um, I, I think it's yeah. difficult. I know that there are some artists that, that can or do, but I, I find it very uh -huh. difficult to mm. separate the artistic um, impulses from psychology and from from a non philosophical perspective. I mean, it's 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 yeah. It's definitely about one's life okay. to some extent, at least. Although it, okay. it, it 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 has the ability to be more of a synthesis of both. I guess is the, what I should mm. say. Okay, so um, I am an academic philosopher, but also I I'm a kind of a outsider in academic world. Okay, you, you see, interesting. Because yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> um, you see, um, I I said that I have published almost twenty books. Yes, and I have I have published some very controversial books, and <laughs> yes. um, and those contro controversial books discussed my own experiences you know yeah yeah my own personal experiences because um i think philosopher philosophy should uh <laughs> I, I don't say should but uh, my philosophy um talks about philosophy in general and also um my talks about my own my own philosophical problems so um i believe that um my 
philosophy should not be detached from my real、um, life. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so、um, I have published many books on philosophy and ethics, but in some books I talk very much about myself, my life, my own life, and my own problems. Okay, yeah. So, yeah.、Um, but you know, many academicians dislike this kind of <laughs> right, right, uh, uh, right. an argument. Okay, so.、Um, But oh, of course, I'm an academician. So、um, in this book,、um, in this particular book, I totally discussed about the the topics.、Uh, you see, so in in this book, I do not、uh, talk about myself. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. So this is a purely academic book, and but this is okay. You know. But for me, this is an exceptional kind of exceptional book. So, yeah, um, yeah. because um, I I has I has I have been criticized by academic philosophers that the that that you you talk much about yourself.、Mm. Okay, please please、uh, refrain from some talking about yourself and concentrate on the on the topic itself, topic、mm-hmm. topics themselves. Okay, so this is a this is a point I have been criticized by. An average, you know, the general ac- academic philosophers. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So and and so this time I, I followed their advice and、uh, I behaved as <laughs> if I were a pure academic philosopher. Okay, you know. Right. So then then、uh, then、uh, interestingly,、um, some、um, comments came to me that this is the、uh, one one of the comment came from an. And and reader on the internet, and he or she says that they、um, he or she says that、um, this book was of course interesting, but they didn't help to solve my problems of coming into existence.、Mm. Yeah, so I think this is correct. This should be correct、uh, criticism of of my book.、That's、yeah, because I'm.、Um, Sorry, yeah, correct me. Correct. Yeah, correct me. Is um, this 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 particular book is um purely academic book. So,、mm. by reading this book, people can um can be excited to know you know because they can um put in order many ideas. I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. This kind of um intellectual um. Uh, what, what's the word? So intellect, intellectual excitement they can feel、yeah. by reading my book, but、um, but this book、mm, probably may not help to solve any the reader's existential problem. So this、I、is、see. a limitation of this、uh, yeah. my book. But I, I I'd like I but I'd like again. It,、um, Emphasize that you know,、um, my other books <laughs> talks about you know talk about very much about myself and my existence problems. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I um in the past I have been、um, receiving more existential reactions from readers. How so? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because um um, in my former books, I I discussed、uh, philosophical philosophical problems from from the perspective of my own experience, my、right. own life problems, and so and、um, and in a in a philosophical way, I discussed、um, those problems. And、um, but but the but the the.、Uh, But I used my own experience as an example.、Yeah. So, so、yeah. when reading that book, um, the, uh, many, there, there are many, there were many people, um, who can think、uh, the topic as if it were the reader's own problems. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had an this kind of, um. Communications with some readers on the level of existen- existential level. I don't know how how to say this. Okay. But okay, this、uh, 
yeah yeah but yeah yeah <laughs> um Okay, but so this might be on diff diff different topics. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, I mean, I think, um, I mean, you know, uh, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm not a philosopher. I, I, I do come at this from more of an activist than an artist. But I mean, I have, for what it's worth, you know, I, I, made, a, I made a movie it was called The Epilist, and it was, uh, yes, it was meant to, you know, um, communicate a philosophy but I also used myself as an example that was also partially autobiographical mm -hmm. and I think that was yeah. I think that was important I mean I did it sort of for different reasons that I think you're doing it but I, I don't think that that way of delivering the message is invalid certainly not in all circumstances um what was I gonna say um did you feel, I mean, I think one of the reasons why antinatalists, there's many reasons, but I think one of the reasons why antinatalists don't like to try to bring a more subjective or personal attitude towards the philosophy, mm -hmm. um, aside from wanting to uphold sort of the, you know, just the, the rational, logical arguments and, and sort of holding that up higher, is that is that putting it from a more personal point of view and putting it from a more uh, subjective point of view does open us up to attack more like we receive, you know, we get the why don't you just go kill yourself comments. I mean, we get those anyway, no matter what we do. But when we talk about our lives, uh, especially on the internet, it opens us up for attack more. Um, and from what I understand, you've also sort of gotten some of those attacks from, you know, readers on Twitter or something where people are saying those kinds of things mm -hmm. to you, which I'm, I'm sorry you've experienced. I, I've also experienced it for years myself. It's not very pleasant. Um, so I think that's some of the distaste for that approach, uh, in the minds of some antinatalists, I think also comes from mm. there being a sort of danger to it, you know, yeah. that, that being vulnerable as an antinatalist, even though it may have, I think that approach does have a lot of value in some respects, um, especially in certain applications, absolutely, um, that it's, it's sort of a dangerous place to put oneself in. Yes, yes, I, I understand. And, and in addition to that, I think on the vulner, vulnerability is very important yeah. for philosophy. I believe that, you know, so in this respect, I, I believe that, you know, current academic philosophy should change, should be changed. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, you, you see, in today's academic world, um, yeah the works of philosophy is to just construct the ab 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 abstract ideas and and um, we 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 trying to find out the, you know the the, the our um enemies and foes and sure. attacks the foes. Right, right, right. and they, they attacks back on my uh, philosophical logic and this kind of uh, uh, but you know yeah but if we continue only this kind of thing this is is a kind of one like um just a puzzle solving you know right 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 i do Only agree with puzzle you on that. solving yeah, yeah. Uh, i do i do not want philosophy to be like that yeah yeah because um i i i'm a kind of a not <laughs> it, it's funny to say but i'm kind of a natural born philosopher you know mm -hmm. <laughs> well because um when i was very very young i i think i so my identity was a philosopher. And the, the, the reason is that and I had a problem. I had a, my, I had a philosophical problems in myself, in my mind when I was very young. Yeah. So um, the motiv motivation of my being, um, my, con my continuing philosophy is to, I wanna solve my own problem, problem sure. of life and death. Sure. So um, this is not just a puzzle solving. Of course, a puzzle solving is very interesting and yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. like it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, so but this is one uh, you know the the one aspect. No, no more than one aspect of philosophy. Mm. The other aspect is um, more exist should be more existential one and um, that solving yeah solving my own or everyone's um own philosophical problems in their own actual life mm -hmm. okay so 
but when we come to those um, actual uh, our own actual problem, we suddenly we become very vulnerable. Yeah. 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 So um, it is very hard for me to um, continue this kind of um, vulnerable discussion and yeah. you know those this those kind of um, exchange and discussion yeah. might sometimes be very uh, hard for me and for anyone to right. continue right. itself. It, it, yeah, yeah, continuing itself is very um, harsh. Yeah, strong, harsh, and injure my deep layer of my mind. Uh, the danger of in 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 um, scars, the injuring, you know. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but, easy but, to do damage to itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I think this is um, necessary aspect of um, real philosophical uh, activities. And look, looking back on from, from this pers- um, this point, I must say that, you know, current academic philosophy, which is conducted in universities, avoid from avoid the, yeah. yeah this level you know the discussion of this level so um yeah i <laughs> so this is a uh, this is a yeah this is a reason why i was hated by academic philosophers <laughs> well i'm sorry to hear that i mean i mean for my if i can just say like you know i've always been somebody that's championed alternative uh, methods, especially mm. with a topic. I mean, it, I, I'm a little bit more hesitant to say what philosophy or academic philosophy should do, only because I'm I'm not an academic philosopher, so mm. it's a li- I'm a, I'm a little bit out of place making those sorts of orders. But from my perspective, antinatalism is such an important subject. It can do it can do so much good in the world that it really matters to not cage it into one style. Like, it's really important not to, I mean, my, my only critique of David Benatar, personally, is I, I think the asymmetry is great, but it's also like handing the human race a Rubik's Cube, you know, for something that's not very hard, not very difficult to understand. It makes it very complicated, you know what I mean? And so, so it's important to sort of put it in personal forms, in artistic forms, in mm-hmm. academic forms. All of these different approaches, in my opinion, are really valid because mm. it, it this this conversation needs to happen in all different kinds of ways yes yeah, so uh yeah thank you very much so uh, what you have just said is the um, probably point i i'm fascinated by the anti-natalist discussion so this is my personal impression but the discussion of an um, um, discussion of anti-natalist is not conducted by, you know, just doing, um, just puzzle solving. Yes, right. Yeah, so yeah, this is a point. This is a point why I'm fascinated by, I, I'm, I'm not an antinatalist, but I'm very fascinated by the today's discussion surrounding uh, antinatalism is that they are not just doing puzzle solving, but they are doing more um, yeah. different, they are also doing different things, you know. Yeah. Some motivations come from your own living body, your own living right. mind, spirit. Yeah, this is a point. This is a point why I have researched this, uh, research on this for 10 years. And then I, I, I wish I will continue to do it for more I 10 years. I hope you do, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Well, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I, I, no, 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 no. It, it's a, it's a, it's a pet subject of mine too. It's one of my favorite sort of mm. aspects of all this. Well, listen. I know we've almost been speaking with two, for two hours. I, I don't want to take okay. too much of your time. Let me just ask mm-hmm. a couple of, couple of uh, more questions. Okay. First of all, I just wanted to ask you if people wanted mm-hmm. to buy your book, um, where's mm-hmm. the bl- best place for them to be able to purchase it? Ah, okay. I think I believe that you can buy in on Amazon.com or okay. a, a, other. Um, internet and bookstores um but i'm 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 not sure um you know the you can buy outside japan so this is a japanese book but but um probably this year next year uh you you can you can buy on internet um bookstores because you know there is a time lag 
yeah. bit, uh, you know, uh, in Japan and outside Japan. Mm. But in the in the near future, you can buy, and and please, um, <laughs> so the, this book is written in Japanese. So please, uh, read in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's great news that it'll be a little bit uh, more available to purchase. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Um, I I forgotten to ask you this ahead of uh, before, uh, but just out of curiosity. Um, I mean, we we've, we've spoken a lot about Benatar. What other antinatalists do you find uh, influence? Uh, of, like, what other? Do you have you read uh, Julio Cabrera? We talked a little bit about uh, Karim Akerma. So what other antinatalists do you investigate, I should say, uh, both mm. online and offline? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, in Japan, um, there are n not so many, not so many literature, not so yeah. much literature on, uh, on current antinatalist uh, antinat uh, writing. So, um, yeah, um, in my case, I, yeah, I, I, um, I can, uh, here, listen to the uh, Akarmas and argument, and for the first time in your interview yeah. on YouTube. So, oh, um, <laughs> and I, I've heard, I, I've listened to, I, I've, um, I, I've watched your YouTube channel, uh, and oh, yeah. So, so, um, but you know, your podcast and YouTube channel was uh, is on the language is in English, so. I can understand English, but I believe many um, other Japanese antinatalists do not necessarily um, yeah. he hear and understand English. So there is a big, huge language barrier yeah. between us and you. So um, honestly speaking, um, I'm not so, I do not have much information or knowledge about current, um, current um, antinatalism. Okay, so uh, of course we can uh, search and on the on the internet in English and uh, find find out. We can find out many um, arguments or opinions. Yeah, but um, those um, arguments has not have not been so much introduced in Japanese arg mm. Japanese discussions on antinatalism. Mm. Okay, but, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, but I I, I think um, I, I can find I can find many young scholars and y many young antinatalism activists who can read English very well. Yeah. So um, in in the coming um, couple of years, um, they will introduce uh, those um, opinions and information into Japanese. So in yeah, so we can perhaps um, begin to know their uh, opinions and. Yeah, so, uh, you know, um, currently, um, the only translation was on Benetta's book. Yeah. And, and, and also on some, some articles was, have been translated on magazines on, on that uh, in nine, 2019. Yeah. Mm. I, I wish to, I wish someone to translate um, the Ken Coates the book. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. In, in into Japanese and yeah. also um, he, and his um, Karim Akeruma and their um, anthology and the history of antinatalism into Japanese. Yeah, yeah. So probably. Um, Japanese, dis Japanese discussion on current antinatalism will, um, yeah, will be more active, become more active, but we, um, we don't have much information now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope, th I hope that those translations can happen uh, in the near future, both in Jap mm. into Japanese and to a lot of other languages too. I, I think the Ken Coates book is a little bit in some form of lingo because he's, he's no longer with us. Um, but that would be a wonderful one to see translated into multiple languages. So I, that's a, that brings a good wind. You know, I, I very much look forward to seeing how antinatalism develops in Japan and what the future of Japanese mm. antinatalism looks like. I think that's uh, you've offered a, a fascinating window into sort of uh, 
the, the baby steps towards that uh, right now, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. Um, so I just before we close out, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, your YouTube channel, the Tokyo Philosophy Project, uh -huh. which I really enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed your, your <laughs> interview you. with Rivka Weinberg, who was also a guest on the podcast. She mm -hmm. says hi, by the way. Um, so I just was curious if you're uh, going to continue that that YouTube channel. Do you have plans to do more interviews on that channel? Yes. Um, yes, I, I would. Um, I will. I, I want to try to uh, continue the, the in, in interview on, on the um, Tokyo Philosophy Pro project. But, you know, under this um, Corona COVID-19 yes. circumstances, um, it, is, it, is, it is hard to continue in that style, you know. So, um, yeah. so, I, so uh, two years ago, I, two or three years ago, I wanted to um, create, okay, so, um, I'm living in Tokyo, and, and lots of philosophers come to Tokyo. Yeah, come to Tokyo every year. So um, I, I, yeah, I ask some of them and had a discussion. So um, I, 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 I thought I could continue this type of um, interviews, mm -hmm. um, but 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 this year um, the, <laughs> the COVID nineteen happened, so no one can, can come to Tokyo for the time being. So yes, so uh, yes, I but. From this year, I will, um, yes, I would like to create that cha um, the channel and program and that conversation with with other philosophers and by using this this kind of and um, Zoom and other devices. Yes, I, but you know, I'm doing a lot of work simultaneously. Of right. Please right. give me time. No, no, no. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I, I know how much time goes into running a YouTube yeah. channel, so I, I get it completely. Well, that's very exciting. I'm glad that you'll be continuing it, at least in some form in the future. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I, I suppose that's all I've really uh, prepared today. This has been really wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for all of your time. Thank uh, you. It's been, just been a, a real pleasure having you as a guest on Exploring Antinatalism. So th thank you so much for being with me today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I enjoyed very much. Follow Mr. Morioka on Twitter and subscribe to his YouTube channel, Tokyo Philosophy Project. You can also buy his book on Amazon and also check out a hugely revised list of his Antinatalism Categories Project. Links below. Thank you for listening to the Exploring Antinatalism podcast. This has been Amanda Oldfan Sukunik and Mark J. Maharaj. You can find us on YouTube on the channels Forever Wolf Films and Question Mark, respectively. Keep up with my daily antinatalist news updates at Antinatal News on Twitter. Please follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and email us at exploringantinatalism at gmail.com. The podcast can be listened to on our YouTube channel, Exploring Antinatalism Podcast, as well as Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Our website, www.exploringantinatalism.com, was designed by the amazing Visions Noirs. Please visit Visions Noirs at www.bionoir.com and find more links to his work below. Logo art by the incredible Life Sucks. Please visit his YouTube channel. And if you would like to perhaps purchase one of the new Exploring Antinatalism t-shirts by Life Sucks, please visit his Etsy page at www.etsy.com slash shop slash Life Sucks Publishing. And proudly announcing, our new theme music was graciously provided by I Doubt It. I Doubt It is an alum of the Exploring Antinatalism podcast, so please check out his episode and visit his amazing YouTube channel. All the best, and bye for now.